Imagine that a disease is ravaging your community. It's turning the people you love into mindless creatures just looking for meat and blood. When all of a sudden, salvation discovered on the horizon. A ship that could take you away from this blighted land, but little did you know the real dangers once you were aboard. I'm Andy Burkowski for VGS, and this is the hidden story of the impossible choice on the ghost ship. Our story begins with Abby searching the coast, trying to find safe passage to the aquarium to find Owen, when on her way she discovers a massive ship crashed against the Seattle port. Rusted and broken with the words Washington Transit Authority emblazoned on the side. Once inside this creaking casket, she finds something horrible. Bodies, not yet turned, all sleeping soundly in cots, with an arrow either through their throat or their eyes. Who these people are will never know, but one unfortunate victim did leave a message. Well, I'm gonna crash. Despite the adrenaline of this whole shitstorm, this flu thing is kicking my ass. Please let me catch a few hours of sleep so I can fight this thing. I cradled our little bee and put her to sleep. I think she's pretty shaken up by the violence of it all. She asked, Mommy, why did you and Daddy push all those people? I told her that it was the only way for us to get on board. She nodded, but I don't think she fully comprehends. Maybe I should have said something different. I don't know. Anyways, if she wakes up before me, read some of her books with her, that seems to calm her down. Hopefully you were able to get the ration situation sorted out. Love you, Quinn. A mother saying her final goodbyes to a daughter she would never see again. Not because she fell victim to the infection, but instead murdered in her sleep. What happened? Clearly there was sickness aboard, but was this just a sore stomach or the virus? Abby continued to explore and eventually opens a door to find a body propped up against it. In its hand, a crossbow. Could this be the murderer that took all those lives so many years ago? This unknown assailant is also not yet turned. So what happened? As she pushes further and further, she finds more bodies with arrows in their brains, along with infected that continuously walk the halls. This doesn't seem like a normal fairy. Bags and beds have been set up in every corner of the ship as if to facilitate a much larger crowd than ever intended. In a lone corner, Abby finds a note from a crewmate aboard the vessel. Thank you for your help with that infected passenger. We're lucky to have someone with your training and grit aboard. My crewmates are useless, and I don't agree with the captain keeping the weapons locked away. We can't stay willfully ignorant that we have infected passengers on board this ferry. Weapon storage is on the aft top deck, combo 907701. Your crossbow is in there. I trust you on this. A mutiny on the ship. With crew and captain at odds, this lost soul decided to put matters into his own hands and give a killer a means to exterminate those who were a threat. But were they really a threat? Is that why they were killed so softly as they slept? A mercy and not a murder at all. More infected pollute the lower levels of the ship along with the debris of passengers running for their lives. At the top of the ship, hordes of infected still roam, locked away with the Seattle rain pouring down. Some advanced infected evolved in this strange petri dish. If someone was tasked with killing these infected decades ago, they didn't do a very good job. Abby eventually finds the safe mentioned in the last note. Inside, there's weapons, supplies, and a Fedra terror tactics field guide. Why would this be on the ship unless it belonged to a soldier? Someone who could be ruthless when others couldn't. Someone who knows how to handle a crossbow. Finally, when Abby does reach the helm of the ship, 
inside she finds what's left of the captain an arrow through his heart a bottle of booze on his side and a note on the ground 820 left san diego course set for vancouver crowds trying to get onto the boat while we loaded grew violent but evac successful 35 souls aboard captain aj malador in command 1450 two passengers complained of seasickness set up a makeshift infirmary on the lowest deck for them to rest 1338 radio check-in with vancouver port good news so far no sign of infection among their population 730 passenger barnes disappeared from the infirmary crew dispersed to search for him 1450 passenger barnes found discovered to not be seasick but infected passenger josephine roberts intervened wrestled him it overboard 1905 miss roberts requests to have everyone re-examined by ship's medic denied we don't have the appropriate scanners anyway her subsequent requests to hand the weapons also denied i'm not going to let paranoia lead to disaster 1835 despite protests additional passengers claiming of various ailments headache indigestion dizziness all temporarily quarantined in the infirmary below decks 2017 visual landfall of seattle tried radio channels to inquire about refueling but no answer will press forward 2100 everyone in the infirmary has been executed those people were not infected this is cold-blooded murder no one is going to disembark until we find the responsible party as suspected it was roberts we shot each other i can't imagine she'll survive if i pull this thing out i'll probably bleed out in minutes going to steer towards the shore so everyone aboard can get to land port is close need to stay i hear infected outside my door was she right the captain's last words still ring in my head was she right captain aj did his best to help those aboard and fight against paranoia but josephine roberts believed in something different and they ended up killing each other the important question though was she right the port of seattle was empty so close after the outbreak day those complaining of seasickness could have possibly been a threat or did roberts brutally murder dozens of people for no reason whatever it was it wasn't enough because infected still roamed this ship decades later in the end we'll never have a complete understanding of what happened we're left with this husk of a forgotten time and the question was she right i'm andy burkowski for vgs